bro, 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 We're coming at you live from archaeological site to give you another world-famous commentary on Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. We have our movies paused roughly the five-second mark. A Paramount picture is fully up on the screen. And uh, while you guys get synced up with us, we're going to go around the dig site and meet the bros. As always, I'm your host, the mad scientist, Brian Banner. And joining me tonight is our enforcer in the paint, Matthew F. Geiger. Geiger, I know you often go on adventures to find long-lost treasures. Uh, can you tell the folks uh, at home a little bit about your last one? Yeah, my last one, I went on an adventure to find my long-lost parents um, to a place not many people are familiar with called Detroit, Michigan, because they were crackheads. And I found them, and we did a lot of drugs, and after that, I don't really quite remember where I left them. So they're still lost. Sounds like Sounds- a hell of an adventure, though. Absolutely. I also brought a bullwhip, so it's pretty similar to this story. Yeah, if, you think, if you think Spielberg and Lucas is a good team, wait till you hear Banner and Geiger drunker than shit doing this movie here in about two seconds. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be yeah. good. All right, All guys. Right. Again, we have our movies paused at roughly the six-second mark. We're going to hit play in three, two, one. bum 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 what an old school Paramount picture. I love how the mountain just goes. That's pretty cool directing there. Yeah, yeah. they apparently uh, they spent forever finding the perfect mountain to film. Mountain, yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they were like, this is how we want to do this, and they have to. There's your boy. That was probably some intern's job that's now like running. That was probably Harvey Weinstein's job back in 81. And now he's, well, now he's in jail, but he was kind of running Hollywood. Yeah, he was. he did some stuff. Is there ever, you know, I don't know Harrison Ford in real life, but the characters he play are just man's men. Is there anybody that's played more roles, like just the fucking man role? Maybe Stallone, but Harrison Ford was the the biggest dick in the 80s for sure. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about Swayze on this podcast about being our god. Is I think Harrison Ford might be like... He's Jesus. He's like he's like our Noah. Yeah, something like that. You know, he's he's right up there with them. Here's another John Williams classic. This is a this one isn't talked about, but it's very iconic as well. I mean, Banner, if you had to have a dinner party with three people, it'd probably be the three people that well, maybe four in this movie. It'd be John Williams, George Lucas, Spielberg, and Harrison Ford, and then you drunker than shit without a shirt on. There's no way you'd be allowed at the table, though, even in your own dream. Ah, ah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not worthy to be at that table. Let's be honest with ourselves. I love how they set this up, too. Like, Obviously, Lawrence Kasdan, he, uh, he's the guy that wrote Star Wars and Solo as well. Another Lucas dude. What's it? What's insane to think about back in the 80s, though, all the movies that are cool in our generation came from something like comics or something. George Lucas wrote all of these, just came up with yeah, all these Yeah, he just characters. thought of these characters and these stories. I mean, when you tell me an adventure movie, like if it has the theme adventure, this is the first and only movie I think of. I'm like, oh, it must be an Indiana Jones movie. Of course. This is Maybe one... like a Pirates of the Caribbean movie might be the same as that, but... Yeah. That's but adventurous. still, even that... That those yeah. movies weren't invented just out of thin air; they're based off no, of a absolutely. ride. But this is this story, I believe, is the best. And I'll just come out and say it: I'm not as familiar with these movies as I am Star Wars. Obviously, I've seen all these movies a lot, but Star Wars, I'll watch. You know, I'll watch the original trilogy every one of them at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. These not so much. I just don't think there is on TV as much either, which is weird. They're not. Uh, at the time of dropping this, though, they should be on Netflix. Um, yes. So that'll that'll hopefully help it. But of the f- three, because I don't consider the fourth one a movie because it's such an atrocity. Um, 
this is my second favorite. I like Last Crusade a little bit better, just a little bit better, and that's mainly because Sean Connery. Uh, you, if you say that a badass dude with a bullwhip who's like a rugged man's man is chasing the Nazis to like a Christian treasure to take over the world, I'm like, dude, that's a pretty cool fucking story. Oh, like, can, it's actually like it's ridiculous, but if you read about Nazi history, it's actually fucking true. They they've done crazier shit than this than trying to find the Covenant. I, this is, we say on this podcast, you don't have, your, your first scene doesn't have to be the best scene, but it's got to set a tone. This scene sets a tone. Bing! We don't have a bell anymore. Geiger lost it. Holy shit. He found the bell. Wow. Well, the bell... The bell was out for like six months because um, it's Stapler girlfriend. It, he beat the shit out of her. Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, see what the Stapler was wearing. But it's back now. It's off his suspension, out of jail time, looking pretty fit. Did a lot of workouts and stuff. He's got his and head also, on my wife now. just found it in our cabinet, so that's cool. But as, as you were saying, Banner, they could have obviously just started this movie just like him in a classroom, and then you kind of see him later come in Anna Jones. But this sets a fucking tone for sure. Like, this is an action-adventure movie. You better set tight, get your popcorn ready. I don't think they had beer in theaters back in 81, but maybe you... I bet you snuck in a flask or something. All right, so here's the question. Would you be more scared of the spiders on your back or the falling into the snake pit that he does later on? I... I would take a spider any day of the Give week. Give me the Fuck spiders snakes. all day, every day. Fuck snakes, dude. And this is what I love about him is he's a badass man's man, but he fucking hates he snakes. He hates snakes. I, I'm the same. I fucking hate snakes. I can't stand them. Does Does Harrison Ford have better, like, facial expressions when he's doing Like, you could really see the wheels turning in his head. Like, wait a minute. I'm not going to go into this light because something might happen. I'll do you one better. Does anyone have better facial hair than Harrison? Like Bradley Cooper's five o'clock shadow isn't as good as fucking Harrison Ford's right here. Uh, That's true. But Bradley Cooper's up there, man. I know we're not a big fan of him on this pod. Well, you are now, but. No, we made a Miz after a star is born. Yeah. I'm really into him actually. But uh, I'm still not a fan, but he's got a, I think with Bradley Cooper, he's got the hair on top too. Yeah, a little bit of shag that really puts him ahead of Harrison Ford as far as the hair feature, in my opinion. So Harrison Ford, you know that after I believe it was the original Star Wars, or if not, definitely Empire Strikes Back, he wanted them to kill off Han Solo because he just thought it fit the character. He's kind of tired of playing him. I doubt he ever got tired of playing this character, though. This had to have been a fun character to play. I know he did a lot of his own stunts, which was probably grueling. Well, that was – he actually – they had to completely flip production upside down on Temple of Doom because he actually broke his back doing a stunt. And and so they had to – Temple of Doom's the shirtless scene, right, where he goes crazy? Yeah, Yeah. and he got – actually, back in the 80s, man, people didn't really get in shape for roles. You are either in shape or you weren't before you got him but he got in shape for that role yeah he was doing like he was doing squats with chains on the bar and all kinds of shit sick and yes that's i know that because i've read the special edition uh or i've watched the special edition dvd in the box set is it like not straight of me to actually want to see that youtube video of him working out with a shirt off oh it's in i'll give you the box set man it's on there Okay, cool. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Though. Yeah, it's awesome. He has the, he broke like three vertebrae in his back, and he was like, "So, like, can I still work?" And once again, too, I don't know if this was the first one, but a lot of movies take from this when he kind of picks it up, then the walls start closing in, and sh- a la Aladdin. Um, but a lot of movies fucking kind of take from this scene. I don't know the if this boulder is following one. him. Yeah, I don't know if this yeah. one was the first one to do it or not, but this definitely did it the best. What's great is he's like, isn't he a college professor pretty yeah, much? Yeah. Like, 
And Jeff Hornacek is actually um, a teacher, but on his Christmas break, he just sets out his mom's and eats pie. Like, Indiana Jones is out there fucking getting treasure and shit on his Christmas break. Yeah, but yeah. eating pie doesn't sound that bad. No. Actually, Mama Hornacek's pie might be just as dangerous as going on these. I mean, you see what it could do to your hips if you have too much of it. It's good. I mean, we, I mean, we haven't seen your hips in years. So. I know. I'm fatter than fuck, if you guys don't know. So this is the third time that George Lucas and Harrison Ford have hooked up because they did American Graffiti, Star Wars, and then now this. And he actually originally didn't want to be Indiana Jones because he didn't want to be uh, typecast as only being able to yeah. do George Lucas films. Right here, the bullwhip. Whoosh. If you guys think Grease is cool, go watch American Graffiti. Uh, That's American fantastic. Graffiti absolutely destroys Grease. Ron Howard's in it, right? Uh, I believe, uh, yeah. Let me look up that. There's a lot of great cast now. I'll look up that cast. And they were all so young. That was like 75, maybe? Here's the boulder. This is also one of my favorite rides at Disneyland. 73. yeah. Richard Dreyfuss is in it. Cindy Williams. Shit, I forgot Dreyfuss was in it, too. Susan Summers is in it. Wow. Is there anything cooler than running around in an Indiana Jones hat either? No. My father-in-law wears an Indiana Jones hat everywhere he goes, and I was like, this, this is a good man. I love, and these are the type of guys that were in uh, Ace Ventura 2, whatever they call them. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the Yaka Yaka tribe or yeah. whatever the fuck. Indy almost made it. So close. Dude, in like five, well, no, maybe ten years, those bull cuts will be fucking in style. They'll be getting all the pussy. Yeah. They can just wait it out and not catch any fucking disease that they don't have medicine for that'll just basically kill their entire tribe. This is like this is like me handing you my keys at the end of the night when I'm like, I'm fine to drive. And you go, yeah, no, I'm like, just give them to me. me. And yeah, exactly. I have a bunch of Native Americans pointing arrows at you because I don't want you to drink and drive. It's the only way that you can keep me from drinking and driving. <laughs> and then you just stare at the keys and it's like, ha, 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 now I can drink and drive. I was like, now I'm drunker than he is and I'm going to drive his car to McDonald's. <laughs> so an adventure movie has to have a lot of things. One... I believe that it needs to be set in a warm climate, even like a hundred degree, maybe jungle type climate. I believe there should be Native Americans. I believe there should be at least 20 scenes where the walls are closing in or they come just one second close to fucking death. There needs to be a good chase scene like we're seeing right here. Yeah, there's nothing like a good chase scene with dudes in loincloths. This guy's like, damn, like it's been on my hook. Ah, fuck it. Better just start the plane. In the Broforce squad, do you think that'd be Jeff's job, just waiting for us to be like, hey, man, just whenever we come screaming, you need to start the fucking plane and then take off once we're in it? I feel like it would be, but I also feel like Cycli is probably the one that we would trust most with getting the plane That's in true. the air. Actually, maybe even, no, actually, it's probably Brett Barry. Because he's actually a pilot. That's true. He could fly. Yeah. And Cycli would just leave our asses. So. Also, the uh, couple seconds back, but when he swings off the vine into the water, there's so many things in this movie, and I don't care really. Oh, fuck a snake. Yeah. I don't really care how old you are, but there's so many things in this you did in your backyard or at the swimming pool because it's like, dude, it's so fucking cool. And I would still do it today. Absolutely. I love how he's wearing a Yankees cap. It's, uh... And the then dude, I'm pretty sure the, short the, round in the second one wears a Mets cap. Yeah, well, he's definitely from like Arizona, but for some reason he's here. He has no New York accent at all. I can't remember where this takes place. Like, his name's Indiana, which actually, if you didn't know, it's, it's George Lucas' dog. dog's name, yep, yeah, yep. where he came up with that. But this doesn't take place in Indiana, I don't believe. No, it just says the university. I don't know I what university it is. It'll probably say here in a second. 
If you know, comment below. This is great. Coming up here in a second, the teacher. Dude, back in '81, I mean, kids said nothing. How many of his students do you think he had fucking relationships with? More, more than he can count. I mean, that blonde in the front lo- row is playing way too much attention. For it was, it was, it was a whole different meaning to office hours back then. Absolutely. I don't know how I can put this or say this delicately, but if you have unprotected sex with me, I'll give you an A. And also, you should leave that apple on the desk because I get hungry afterwards. Oh, she's... Yeah, full court press right there. Yeah. That chick would, like, probably give you the best sex of your life, but then probably, like, hold you at knife point and scream, tell me you love me. That, Which is that, also a fun game to play. That chick probably gave Lucas an over-the-pants hand job to get that role. Let me draw I love you on your eyelids. That doesn't happen at Hollywood oh, my back boy. then. How many times did you play the game of the globe where you just spun it, and then you're like, wherever it lands, I'm going to live the rest of my life. You're like, uh, India, fuck, spin again. Yeah, not doing that one. Where's L.A. at? <laughs> yeah. Where is it 75 degrees and never rains? I'll even live in Tampa, fuck, but quit this Middle East shit. Russia? Forget that. Another thing I think adventure movies have to have is a fairly simple story to follow. Yeah, I would say this. these ones have a pretty... Uh, like more complex than normal. These are more complex than they need to be. Yeah, but I, I would think say you're... pirates is really complex actually. Once you get into them. Yeah, the first one's not. The first one's not, but the once they get the once, second once and the third second one and the third one are very complex. The fourth one just sucks, and then the fifth one kind of gets back to its roots a little bit. I'll say this: um, if it doesn't have a complex story then you should be able to never watch it and go kind of right in the middle of it and just be like okay i get it and watch it or or maybe only watch it one time and then 10 years later just go back but this these movies one reason i never watch them on tv is because whenever i'm in it first sometimes i don't know which one it is for a while and it's it's not one that you can just pick up in the middle of and watch this one and the third one are very similar because they're both chasing the nazis to be the first to get something the second one is vastly different. You can always tell if it's the second one. This is one of the best scenes in the movie, I think. It's just I, I love when they slow down an action movie just to set up like everything you're about to fucking see. Yeah. yeah. They basically tell you what's gonna happen. Yeah. They say there's we're gonna find an idol, we're gonna put it on a stick, we're gonna find the Covenant of the Ark, and we're gonna release whatever's inside of it everywhere. And they spend a good five minutes here telling you about that. Oh, and of course it's Americans versus the Nazis. Anytime the Nazis are in it, doesn't it just go from a B minus to an A minus movie? <laughs> I mean, what, what better villain could you have? The, yeah. Is there a better villain in world history? There's not. I mean, we disagree at so much as Americans, but everyone can agree with one thing. The Nazis fucking sucked. For sure. Like, maybe a better one just in world history, thinking ever. Maybe, like, Genghis Khan? He was a bad motherfucker. Yeah, but people don't know as much about That's him. That's true. Like the Nazis. Like, Hitler. Or, like, Caesar? I, I thought Caesar's kind of cool. I don't know. He's like, don't you guys go to church? Well, I mean, yeah, of course we do, but I mean, just I mean, we don't. We're just we're kind just of there testing to you. You know, yeah, we're not we, really paying attention. Yeah, we're just making sure that you knew what you were talking about. I'll have to say this, and I'm not a religious guy, but movies that have like a religious background, because there are actually got a lot of great stories in the Bible, are just better movies. I feel like because. Um, Going after the covenant and shit, like if you actually find it and you you know believe in Christianity and everything, there's probably mythical powers in it, which is the reason why probably Nazi wanted to have it because like dude, if we get Christians on our side, we will take over the fucking world. It makes sense. For yeah, sure. well, and not only that, but they felt like they could weaponize it. Yeah, which of course is, 
like the Americans, that's why they want it because they're like, we can weaponize it because that's just what we do as American Americans. We but weaponize only Nazis everything. would use Christianity to their own strengths and gains to weaponize something. No one else would do that. Just no, Nazis. Not. Look at this math. math. I love, yeah, I love on the background too. It's like, also, after we're done with this uh, Bible lesson, we need to solve for X because it's driving me fucking nuts. I love all of these suits would still be in style, except for maybe these. the bow tie. I love, oh. yeah, I was gonna say I'm not a big fan of the bow tie, but the fat dude, his tie, I'd rock that. The three piece is just awesome. All right, you're a vest guy. What do you think of uh, Indiana Jones's vest here? I love it. In his suit, absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Harrison Ford movies. can literally play anything. He's a space cowboy. He's an archaeologist, but he's also a college professor here, and I'm buying it. I'm buying how smart he is. It's so cool to think, like, when I watch this, I almost think I'm like, man, what comic is this from? Because it, it's definitely like he's somebody during the day feel. and someone totally else at night, but it's all George Lucas. It was It's fantastic. And I think that's what makes it cool, too, is that He's not a different person. He's the same person. Everybody knows he's this and this. Yeah. I wonder if he'd sign the Sokovia Accords. What kind of religion do they believe in in Germany? Is it? It's not Christianity, is it? I Catholic? don't know. Huh, I don't know. I know I there's, like, Roman Catholic, Catholic, and then there's, like, like, Orthodox Catholic. I would think Hitler was, like, Roman Catholic. They don't – They're. I mean, they're not, like, a Islam religion or anything. No, no. There's some form of Christian. I just don't know what. That's a nice car, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is an 80s movie. It was taking place in the 30s, a la when Nazi was in power. I believe Hitler died in, like, 35. Uh, he died in 45. Forty-five. It was thirty-three to forty-five, I think, when the Nazis were in power. Yeah, they. Uh, well, I think this one is World War One, technically, and I think the third one happens during World War Two. What a fuck pad he has here! No dude. kidding, he just has an open bottle of champagne chilling at his house as he's in his robe. He's like, "Look, Marcus, can you make it quick?" My 8 o'clock is uh, on its way. 7 o'clock, we got done early. Yeah, see, guys, you can't bring in a chick to your bachelor pad and have a picture of Fight Club up there and, a like, you know, um, the fucking naked chick from Sports Illustrated. You can't do that. You got to have a bunch of books and a globe. Make it look like you're really smart and shit. She'll be like, oh, he's eloquent. There's no way he's going to fuck me and not call me tomorrow. Of course. Not of this course. guy. Have a lampshade on. And once you get a little drunk, then you take out the bull whip. <laughs> once again, we've talked about this many times on the Broforce Squad when we watch old movies. It used to be custom when a man came into another man's house, you said, come on in, and you automatically poured him a drink. There wasn't, oh, you want a beer? No, it was just you poured him a drink, and then you had a conversation. Yeah. We need to go back to that. I would be I fine with that. That's my idea to make America great again. Whenever you go into someone's office or house, they just automatically pour you a drink. Just make that law. There. Send that one to Congress. Absolutely. Is there a single do, – do the do planes only land in the water at this time frame? I, I mean, no. I mean, obviously in the – they would have Southwest Airlines, I think, or American or – what was on Mad Men? I mean, that was in the 60s, I guess. Pan Am. That was on Catch Me If You Can. Yeah, I think this is a Pan Am flight, but still. Look at this Nazi dude. Could they have typecasted anyone better? He looks I so know. good. Is there I anything? Need, I need Jeff here to do the German accent. I don't know. I was like, Scheiße. Scheiße. That's about all Scheiße. I can What's this? Simon, Indiana. Indiana. Okay, so right there, he's in L.A., apparently, because they, they just showed him. Yeah, he's driving just, over the coast. I wonder if he's at, like, 
like U C Berkeley, maybe. Probably something like that. U C L A, maybe U S C. Nah, well, maybe U U S C. I bet it's U S C. But it's definitely Southern Cal. Now he's going to Nepal. What? See, in the real movie, he'd have to go back on Monday because the sub would call in sick. He's yeah. like, dude, I'm about to discover the covenant. He's like, I can't, I'm sorry, my kid's sick. Yeah, yeah. I'm, he's got a fever, contagious. See, Banner, I think you could win this. You could win something like this. Like a I, fest. I could go deep in a in a shot tournament. So the only other movie I know her from is Animal House. Uh, yeah, well, she also reprised her role in the fourth Indiana Jones. But okay. other than that, those are the only three movies that I've ever seen her in. Which, I mean, I think she's pretty good in this, so. I mean, yeah, she's pretty cute. I don't I mean, know. I don't know if it's just she's just a victim of our generation and why we haven't seen a lot of her or what. Being in this, this animal chick's house, fingernails this, are grossing me out. So this is a chick. Yeah. See, back then I could ask gender. We're in '81, guys. So calm down. Fucking put your Bible or whatever thing you're throwing at me. But this is a chick. I'm pretty sure. So this is a prequel to Making a Murderer because that's definitely fucking <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Avery's, Avery's mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks worse there than she does now. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I love that hat. Is there anything hotter than a chick that can hold her booze? A chick that can't? That's true. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even think of that. That's a fa- iconic scene with his shadow up on the wall. Oh, yeah. I try to do this at night before I have sex with my wife. It's just not the same because she's like, well, what are you doing with that hat on? I'm like, damn it. I'm, I'm trying I'm to be like Jones. Jones. That's like my life's work is to convince Brooke Banner to watch an Indiana Jones movie. She's never seen one and she refuses to watch it with me. Why does she refuse? I don't know. She's just like, she'll get like 10 minutes in and she's like, I just, I don't get it. So, like, he raped her? I'm confused. No, you know, he they dated for a while, then he left. This is the problem with women. You go back, and you're like, man, I bet she'll be happy to see me. But no, she'll have some sad, sad fucking story and how it's all about her. I don't know. Indiana's like, dude, what the hell? I've, I've been in L.A. for a while. You know, planes go both ways. Come visit me. Okay, with the amount of shots that she just took, she's got to be at least feeling something. I don't care how well you can hold your liquor. I don't know, she she looks like she could still make good decisions though, so we better give her some more. Yeah. I don't know why she did that. She has to clean that up. She's the waitress. Yeah. I don't know. Does she own the bar? I'm confused. I believe she owns it. I mean there's there's not a manager up there asking her if she's folded her silverware <laughs> so she'd go home. So I'm guessing she owns it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. In a shot like, tournament like that, I bet I bet I could go deep. I could hold my own. Like this is the original TGI Fridays that started in Nepal. <laughs> yes. You pull this shit on half price mozzarella night, Indy? What the fuck? You know this is busy. She's 80s hot. She is. And when was this? I think this was 80 81. One? Yeah. 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 yeah? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if I can get us some horns fun facts here. 2019, I'm turning over new leaf, guys. I'm going to I'm going to be prepared for podcasts. So I put the link to the IMDb uh, page on my notes. Sure. That was as far as I got. It's a big ass necklace. 
It's the, it's the pendant. That would weigh her down, wouldn't it? Maybe. Put a crank in your neck. All right, I've got some good stuff here. I actually knew a lot of these already, but we're, we're not there yet. Don't you think this movie could connect to pirates? In a weird way, I feel like it could, yeah. Because pirates is what, like the 1500s? Yeah, but he could go back to try to find buried treasure or something like that. Right, and that's like, what I'm saying. The Black like Pearl the continuity would work. Die. So if the Black Pearl can't die, he could come back. They did such a good job with casting this guy. I know, and I love how Nazis like hate Jewish people, but they'll allow like a Indian and a Native American in their yeah in their crew. And then you got like the New York mobster next to him too. Again, she's just she's just out to get wrecked tonight, right? She's like, I did 40 shots, beat this chick, won some money, was given three grand to find a necklace that I already have from my ex-boyfriend, and I got this German dude asking for the same thing, and I'm going to blow smoke in his face. She's asking to get hit. The only thing that's weird, though, is, you know, Nazis wanted blonde hair, blue eyes, white Americans, but his crew looks like some thing on a playground in like today's Nickelodeon episode where like every single race is identified with it's, it's really it's, this movie was ahead of its time it was really we just need a fucking transgender person walking through the door and we're set to go well I mean we don't we don't know that one of these aren't transgender who are we to judge this is my dream is I don't have to do anything I just have to tell someone to grab somebody my and heart then, just broke a little because they just broke like four bottles of liquor. It's sad. This would scare the shit out of me, though. Somebody coming out with at me with a hot iron like that. This dude might be one of the greatest type cast villains ever, too. Because he has the most punchable face I've ever seen. <laughs> the fucking bullwhip. In movies, everything catches on fire way faster than I feel like it would in real life. Well, in Nepal, everything's covered in gasoline. It's their custom. Oh, I didn't realize that. I've actually never been. It's on the bucket list, though. Again, the amount of alcohol that they're wasting right now is just... Why don't they just sit down, have a drink, and talk this out? That'd be the rational thing. I bet they'd have a lot in common. They're both looking for the Covenant of the Ark. That's something. Yeah. Right through the fucking head. With the Tommy gun. God, isn't it great, too, when the... <laughs> this is awesome. When the bullet hits through the wine or whatever, just takes a drink. So Wouldn't good. You? I mean, you don't want to waste it. I mean, she—it's she's lucky it's not the end of the month. All this is going, all this inventory is going right down the fucking drain. I know. I'd be so I, pissed if I uh, own this place. See, that's true though. Alcohol would catch on fire. It is, but would it? And and I think like, it would spread like that. Liquor. If it's all down the bar, I guess it would. I, I don't, don't know. know. Sounds like a bro four squat challenge. I don't know I, that it would though, because think about this: how many people smoke cigarettes? Back in the day, like in bars and stuff. Well, we're going to Nate Thurman's next week for a party. I'm going to try it. I'm just going to set his counter on fire and try it. A little yeah. science bro. I mean, it's fine with me. As long as we're not burning down the lab, I'm good with it. God, that would hurt so fucking bad. Why would you? I don't think he knew that it was on fire. It was just near the fire. This is me when I'm really drunk, and I know my DiGiorno's pizza's done, but I can't find my oven mitt. I'm like, dude, I'm just going to take it out really quick. Just I'm do it. Starving. Yeah. Man, you're rich, though, having DiGiorno's. I got Red Baron. Dude, you, there's just some things you need to pay more for. An oven know. pizza. 
DiGiorno, you, you don't fuck with. I know. I'm just saying, Red Baron, though, they're like a dollar. And when you're, Chris, when you're drunk, like, does it really matter? It does. I guess you're right. I want pizza now. I know. <laughs> or DiGiorno. Yeah. <laughs> What's the number for DiGiorno's? I don't know what's your local Kroger's number. Maybe they deliver. <laughs> See, that's the thing, is, man. Like, op- or uh, whatever that fucking app's called, where you can order from a restaurant and for uh, DoorDash. DoorDash, fuck that. They need to do it for grocery stores, where I can just like not all groceries, but just like six things. Because there's sometimes I'm drunk, I'm like, dude, I want a Giorno's pizza, peanut and M and M's, a six pack of Pacifico, and some gum. <laughs> and some gum. And I also am out of deodorant, so just throw that in too. And then someone delivers it to your house. Dude, I tip that dude 20 bucks. Sala. Does Cairo not look like the worst place to ever to go? This looks terrible. Like, look at the view. I have a bunch of roofs. <laughs> with uh, 80 kids. kids too. And every house in Cairo comes complete with its own monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a Brian Banner made up fact. I'm pretty sure this is true, but I may be wrong. When they filmed this, all those roofs had antennas for TVs on them, and they had to take all of them down to film these shots. Wow. Yeah. Like I said, I might have heard that, and I also might have made it up. I love how we're in the Middle East and these people are talking about how Nazis are just crazy people that kill people for no reason. That's awesome. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> if we did this movie now, these would be the villains. Well, and they're in like Cairo, ISIS. Egypt, like literally where slaves, the idea of slaves came from. Yes. And they're like, but those Nazis, they're fucked up. They take it to a whole new level. They're like, what are you talking about, dude? Fucking Germany sucks. <laughs> what if you went back to somebody from, like, the 70s? I'm just like, dude, yeah. <laughs> Fuck Egypt. Like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, ISIS? Like, what are you talking about, dude? Germany's the one that sucks, man. Like, I guess. <laughs> it's like the Trump card. He's like, well, not going to get anywhere if you don't have my idea it is january right now and i'll tell you i'm pretty jealous of harrison ford's fucking tan i would agree with that statement but i'm also just gonna go ahead and blanket it with in general i'm just jealous of harrison ford yeah even at like what he's like almost 80 now he's still rocking is he still married to what's her face i don't think so that's like 20 years younger than him. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they had a falling out. Close to Flock, Flockhart, my producer just told me. So he, all of this wasn't actually filmed in Cairo. A lot of it was filmed in uh, Tanzania. And the entire crew, Harrison Ford included, got sick from drinking the water and eating the food. Yeah, and apparently um, the only person that didn't was Spielberg because he had – food flown in yes that is exactly and right apparently a lot of people like shit themselves on set but you know what if you haven't shit yourself in front of your co-workers then good luck on your new job man i really hope it works out for you it's not even a joke i literally shit myself three days ago <laughs> i mean i've shit myself in front of my co-workers all the fucking time man that's just you know that's just the way it it's is called doing world. business it's called punching in and punching out. Yeah. Here's adult Aladdin with a boo fucking right. riding with some bread. This is so this is actually the story of what happens to Aladdin if he doesn't become a prince. <laughs> yeah, he's just he tried to go down Jasmine pants like one date too soon and she broke up with him. So now he's just back on the streets again <laughs> with the boo. That's what happens, kids. Respect he's like, women. look, I don't agree with what the Nazis are doing, but it's a paycheck, okay? No means no, even if you have a magic carpet. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Why are the Nazis teaming up with these people? I don't fucking get it. They hate everyone. 
I don't get it. Her car, her carpet wasn't so magical, I guess. Yeah, today that carpet wouldn't have any fucking fur on it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And this happens all the time. I went to a vacation in Cairo, and this is basically me trying to get to a sub, uh, planet sub across the street. You gotta fight your way there. So this entire scene, Harrison Ford was like deathly sick, apparently. Yeah. Whenever they filmed all of this stuff. And coming up, the part with the uh, sword. When uh, you have bad diarrhea, sitting on the couch is hard not to shit yourself. But when you're doing like calisthenics like he is kicking around, dude, there's no way. There's yeah, Thank God they gave him dark pants. He uh, Apparently he did like six weeks of bullwhip training also. To really get the feel of it down and be able to actually make it whip. We need to do that. What if we were just at, in our front yards, our neighbors drive by, and we're just doing bull whip <laughs> training in the front with like a six pack cooler, like a Yeti cooler? Yeah, out we just, our shirts off? No, it's not even a Yeti cooler. It's just like an igloo cooler. Yeah, just an igloo shitty ass cooler with ice overflowing it. Like, what is he yeah. doing? Like, uh, he's just doing bull whip training. There's no, man. there's no lid to it. The lid is broke off like years ago. I guarantee you, though, if you did that, no one would fucking come to your house with their kids for Red Wheel. So it might actually work out. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of getting diarrhea, yeah, Red Wheel burritos is something you probably should eat. Yeah, my stomach's just getting upset just thinking about it. I know they don't have a Whataburger all over the country, but in the Midwest, they have Whataburger. Literally thinking about Whataburger tears me up there's just something about it it's so good and it's worth it but this part right here so great. Harrison Ford One was so in movie history he was so sick and so dehydrated they had this entire elaborate fight scene like choreographed out and he couldn't do it so they just <laughs> said well let's just improvise he goes why don't I just shoot him that's fucking awesome yeah so he was so sick and dehydrated, he could not do the stunts. And they didn't have somebody else to do it for him. And so he was like, let me just shoot him. Like, I'm Indiana Jones. Why can't I do that? He's just like, fuck this. I don't have time for it. That's something else that I think that these movies that we talk about from the 80s and really even the, the early 90s that they do that they don't necessarily do now as much is these characters really embody or these actors embody these characters. Like Harrison Ford is Indiana. Indiana Jones. He is yeah. Han Solo. Like, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. But other than that, like, there aren't really, they don't make iconic characters anymore that the actors just embody. See, what if this was me, man? I'm just taking my laundry from my dorm room to my mom's house and fucking Indiana Jones throws it on the ground. I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? What did I do to you? Yeah, I'd be a little <laughs> upset, too. So this is ISIS, right? I mean, it's got to be. And all the explosives all our these. government sold them? <laughs> <laughs> what? You want the stock market up, don't you? Quit bitching. We got to pay for this war somehow. <laughs> no fucking shit. <laughs> That's how you make America great. Dude, he is a great shot. They got the the um, Air Jesuses on with the sandals. Yeah. Those are the 2.0s, right? I believe, yeah. They Al Qaeda waited all night to get them. The fucking the the Foot Locker finally opened uh, at noon today. <laughs> they they so camped waiting. out, right? The Foot Locker. The Foot Locker. <laughs> Dude, that'd be I fun. Want just a getting, I was monkey. gonna say that'd be so fun. Damn just it. getting blitzed with a monkey. And every guy that's single and takes her dog to a dog park. Take all that ass you've gotten from the dog, times it by fucking 20, Ten. and that's yeah. how much you get if you had a goddamn monkey. Oh, shit. Aladdin got a motorcycle? This is me when they tell me that the bar is closing. Like, what? I don't understand. And also, can you put this table back? Like, you just kind of put it in the center. Yeah. So. I love how these guys look like 
a mobster movie in a like fucking Cairo. Yeah, where the hell they, they come from? Yeah, they don't. They look like they're from New York City. They don't look like they're from. They're Nazis. But they I guess they're working for them. for this dude who's French. Just smoking out of a hookah. Do they have weed in the Middle East? Oh, yeah. They have weed everywhere. I don't know if it was like a different kind of weed. This is what me and Cycli say to each other every time we see each other. I was like, I should kill you right now. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but then you wouldn't, you wouldn't get a paycheck. We single-handedly keep the law firm of Ronnie Cycli in business. I do everything I can to look really fucking cool and badass, but I can't fucking walk around just with liquor and drink it. There's no fucking way. I just, I, I throw up all over myself. You can ask Hornacek the one night that he tried that. It was the worst night of his life. Again, going back to that shot tournament, he tried to go shot for shot me with me with, uh, uh, the fuck was it? Captain Morgan. Wow, that we sounds did like, disgusting. We did, we did like 15 shots in our laundry room in college. He literally sat in the bathroom, quote unquote, taking a shit for 45 minutes. He never actually shit. Every time we checked on him, he just said, ah, I need to wipe. <laughs> this guy looks like the bad guy from Roadhouse, kind of. Uh, Maybe it's a prequel. Maybe after this, he's like... After I'm done in Cairo getting all the money, I'm going to open up a bar <laughs> in Missouri. Missouri, yeah. You heard of it? Like, Missouri? Yeah. I'm from L.A., so. It's, like, oh, it's a nice, beautiful place. You think more movies have taken place in L.A. or New York? Ooh, I think New York. That's true. You're saying that like it's a fact. I I would think it's all of them either happen in I would say California would maybe be a close one to New York. Yeah, yeah. I but think if you say just if you if you designate to West Coast or East Coast, I think more are West Coast. Yeah, but if you narrow it down to city, it's New York. This is like Banner at the bar. They instead of the bouncer, they use like ten little kids to escort them out. I love kids. <laughs> I know that's what. Yeah, you don't get aggressive. It's like they're like, oh, Mister Bada, you had too much again. Follow me out. <laughs> we'll take you to Burger King. Does that say, solid like, big... suit is rocking? Also on the back there, does that say Big Dave's Margarita and Tiki Bar? Like <laughs> in downtown Cairo. Yeah, I Googled it. It was the first one that came up. I mean, the drinks are reasonably priced, and I didn't wait too long to get my food. So, yeah, I had a good time. Four stars. It's like a it's Jimmy like Buffett Margaritaville in the middle of Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> it's always five o'clock. I don't know where the volcano blows. <laughs> I can't see them, like, laying outside, and he's like, dude, I got to get the fuck out of here, man. I'll be here all night. So, this is the part of the movie that I'm like, I I don't know, it's kind of slow for me. Not a lot's going on. Well, a little kid's making his dinner, which, you know what? I don't understand the problem. I, yeah, like, I'll move to Cairo. Think about how much more time my wife could have. It's just some little kid would just make our dinner yeah. and do dishes. As long as it tastes fine. <laughs> Here's Here a comes Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What the fuck? Is he putting, like, cough syrup on it? No, I think it's Tabasco sauce, just so he can spice it up maybe a little. So apparently this kid doesn't know it. Does that kid have the biggest nose you've ever seen in your life? Well, that's racist, so... But yeah, it's fucking huge. (laughs) That kid has a good... I mean, he'll probably be a doctor in the United States here in a couple years, though. Yeah. Yeah, that kid looks like he's 43. He's like, okay, well, see ya. I'm going to go do my fantasy football team now. What does this dude look like? This, like, wizard guy. He looks like somebody. It looks like the uh, Frost 
dude in uh when Santa Claus is That's what it is. Yeah, the Meisterbert, no, the uh the winter warlock. Uh, warlock, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've all had this dude living on our couch in college. Yeah. Yeah. I come come. Yeah, that's awesome, Rick. Are you ever going to pay fucking rent or are you just going to like chill here? But he always why? disappears for like three hours a day and comes back with the best weed. So, I mean, it why is off. your biggest stoner friend you think is like one of the smartest guys ever? Because when they're stoned, they like talk about really in-depth shit. Like, think about it, Banner. Like when we're drunk, guys just usually talk about tits or like the biggest shit they ever took. When you're stoned, like you start thinking about like, you know, life. Like, yeah, the life. Like, what if this life, like, what if we're looking outside our bodies the whole time at something that's not even us and we're living something and we just continuously live? And you're like, whoa, dude, that's insane. Did yeah. you order cheese bread? Because Domino's is going to be here any minute and I'm fucking starving. That's a great catch. Fuck, the monkey died? Yeah, he ate, he ate the cough syrup dates. Damn it. All right, on that note, I got to pee. I'll be back. All right, well, I'll just carry it on here. Yeah, just yeah. talk about these camels and shit. It's so hard not to say anything racist here. Um, this does look like the old Egyptian times, though. Just waiting for Jesus to walk by with the crucifix. Also, the ride that they're about to go on, I believe when Banner comes back, he'll talk about this, but in Disney World or Disneyland or something, they have the Indiana Jones ride. If you haven't checked it out, you should. They also reenact the scene when they shoot him in it. Here's Indy climbing up the mountain. He hasn't seen that big a hole since he got with that bartender chick last night. And it was about as dry, too. My banner's back. So this is like you and me trying to sneak back into the bar at 9 o'clock when we get already got kicked out, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we just, like, look at the hole in the roof. I'm like, all right, you And we always have a turban on, too. Of course. Bears Otherwise, they would know it's us. Because he had the beard. Apparently, or no, it's not here. It's when they get to the Well of Souls. There's a certain spot where if you pause it, you can see R2-D2 in the hieroglyphs. What if one of the cave paintings was just like a picture of the internet? Like they like figured it out way <laughs> back then. It's Well, it's like uh, real talk. There's that one painting that's looks like it's earth from space yeah but it was drawn in like the 1400s or something like hey you're not supposed to be here push, push him down the hill again i'm buying right now that harrison ford's notes what the fuck he's doing because if i was in this situation i wouldn't know what i was doing at all he's an archaeologist dude he went to school for this shit and this is the – Yeah, I went is to he school – clues for the Covenant here? This right? is telling him where the Well of Souls is, where the Covenant okay. is at. But just because you go to school for something doesn't mean you know it. I went to high school, but that doesn't mean I know, like, how to read. Yeah, man, I remember, like, you know, if your parents made you go to church, you're like, you know what? I don't even know if I believe in God. But after you watch this movie, you're like, yeah, it's real. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> All that shit happened. This is actually a documentary, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing is our generation 
church doesn't matter. If you put a fucking documentary on Netflix, we'll like petition to get a guy out of jail that might have raped and murdered someone. That's our generation. Yeah. yeah. If you put something on the internet, we're yeah. going to believe it. Like, fuck, dude. This guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. It's right here. Is another one of the most iconic scenes. And this happens too when you mix your drugs and beer perfectly. This is this, this is, is how I feel. This is what happens. <laughs> the look in his okay. eyes right now. This is called acting. Here's the thing: I can never tell if Harrison Ford gives a fuck or literally has no idea what he's doing. I think in the first Star Wars and this movie. He was, you know, definitely ready for it. But then the last couple, you could tell he's just kind of there. But he's such a great actor, it really doesn't matter. He actually tried still. He's like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to try. Heard of that, Natalie Portman? What if it just showed, like, a a painting and it just says Jehovah was right? What if, and then, like, <laughs> movie over. <laughs> Christians just be like, fuck, Really? Are we sure? Maybe get a second opinion, like Achilles, like a blown ACL. <laughs> Think we could play on it in a week? Like, like, we might, we might need Tommy John, but so why is breaking it in half once? That's, I don't know. That That's, they're still going to know the length of it, right? I guess. I mean, you could only do this with like the Nazi flag. Wow. <laughs> You could only do this with, um, you know, with Christianity stories and stuff. Like, if it was a Jewish story or something, they just, like, hey, I'm going to go find the covenant. But then they just give Harrison Ford a buck and he'd be like, all right, you know, I'm cool. <laughs> this, again, is when one of us gets kicked out of the bar. <laughs> They're like, just, you just go. Just leave. I've got this, okay? So every time you see the Nazi symbol, what do you think of? Honestly, Nazi. American History X. Really? Yeah. Because I think of Wolfenstein. Mm. Every single time, I'm just like, like every time I think, I'm like, do I do I have enough bullets, or am I going to go with a knife and have to fucking stab my fucking way out of this goddamn? It's <sighs> the cat. worst. When you're walking around with a knife and you are like one bullet away from losing your life, I mean, I don't know if there's anything worse in life than that. Is there, like, a damsel more in distress than Marion is in this movie? I was kind of hot. I just realized she is completely helpless all the time. I'm not disagreeing with your statement, though. I was going to say something about her being tied up, but I'm just going to yeah, let it yeah, go. I decided not to as well. <laughs> so many things. <laughs> So many things. I don't know how to use one of these things. Like, he's just looking through a telescope. And he's like, oh, yeah, that is where we need to dig. I don't understand how he knows. This is before you, had, you, you weren't worried about going to the Middle East and having some kid with a fucking bomb backpack walking up to you. It was better times, for sure. Why doesn't he just GPS where he needs to dig? What if he just started fucking getting oil there and just be like, fuck the covenant. I got oil. I'm fucking good. Yeah, I'm good and my kids are good. Shia LaBeouf is good. He won't need to work a day in his life. So definitely the outfitters here are definitely selling khaki pants and white shirts, which why not? If you have a tan, that's a pretty good look in this type of climate. Yeah. yeah. You got the bandana for a uh, accessory? Yeah. Once again, though, I know Nazis took over Germany and a lot of Eurasia. But if they're in here, they're going to have, like, cut off sleeves. There's no way they're going to be in full Nazi guard. They'd be hotter than fuck. <sighs> yeah, I don't see it. There's no way that guy's scar would be so perfect like that that you could read it. Right? Right? I don't know. I mean, people get um, – like, football players get branded, and it looks pretty perfect. I bet it would. Maybe. Maybe. 
It looks like they've already dug there. I don't understand. They're like, oh, we just need to dig another three feet. I said, what if Jesus just walked by with like a cross attached? He's like, he's like, hey, Andy. He's like, oh, what's up? He's like, Jesus. what's up? Not what much, man. You know, Tuesday, just taking all this fucking bricks up to these fucking pyramids. These guys are assholes. I'm, I'm about, I'm about honestly two fucking days away from starting my own religion, just saying fuck this shit. I'm like, dude, I'd do it. Like, dude, I'll show him. I'll show management. Another iconic shot, shot right here. Him putting the hat on. The blazing hot sun. Yeah. You all are fucked now. And them just singing, "Here we are working on the railroad all the live long day." All right, I will say the CGI green screen here does not hold up. See, I don't think they had CGI back then, did they? They didn't have CGI, but they had like green screen. Green screen, yeah. Yeah. They built things to last back then. Because, like, if we built this today, it would have collapsed in, like, three years. The insurance would be Especially like, Especially yeah. if Apple would have built it. It'd be like, hey, man, remember, make this not last in a year so everyone gets a new one. Yeah, we got to get it. We got, we got to build a new Ark of the Covenant next year. Yeah. <laughs> if Apple's around when Jesus was, he's like, remember, like, this Bible thing needs to, like, go out of date in 10 years. So we just keep rewriting it. It'll be the bestseller every 10 years. Is there anything else like more terrifying when a movie starts to pick up? There's a giant ass thunderstorm. Once again, this is a bro four squad tradition. Why not just wait? Tomorrow night is clear skies and a full moon. Why not just wait till then? Yeah. Let's just go to the bar. Let's talk it out. Let's make a plan. It's always deep in a hole somewhere. Always. always. That's also That's what awesome. she said. It is what she said. Iconic line. This is probably like a top 10 iconic line in uh, in all of movies, right? I would say so, yeah. Yeah. It just absolutely fucking terrifies me. If Nate Thurman were on the pod right now, he would fast forward through this part. Is Thurman and who else? Oh, you hate scary movies too. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of scary movies. Cycli and Hornacek are our they're horror, horror connoisseurs. Yes, they're they're horror. Very dangerous. You go first. One of the most iconic lines. That mic is really working good there, Geiger. Oh, can you hear me peeing in my bathroom? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, kids, when you have like six beers, they got to go somewhere. You got to go. You're also wearing a Hulk Hogan rules shirt, which is awesome. Yeah. Just to know, like, I'm not a big fan of Hulk Hogan, and I bought this before he used the end bomb like eight times, but it's just a t-shirt I wear sometimes because it fits me really good. They're savages. I'm feeding you. Why does every damsel in distress think, oh, I'm just going to get like a butter knife and I'll stab a guy with it. That'll save me, right? I mean, they do more harm than good. They just need to sit there and, you know, in the fetal position and cry and we'll save everyone else. I remember as a kid coming up here in a minute when that uh, the Nazi guy comes in and he has like the thing that looks like nunchucks, but then yeah. he, but then it ends up being a hanger. Scared the shit out of me the first time I saw this as a kid. Because remember, this is what eight years away from karate, uh, karate rule in the world. Yeah, yeah, eight to ten. Somewhere, somewhere around there. She's definitely eighties hot. Is this part of the movie, or is this her casting call to get picked up? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is pretty dressed, though. And for 80s, yeah, she's good looking, dude. Yeah. 
like you said, it's either you're in shape or you're not. Like, there was no, like, getting in shape. Yeah, no one got in shape for roles or, like, oh, I'm going to wear a tight dress. I might not. Maybe women back then mm. maybe went on a diet or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Is there anything more manly than rappelling into somewhere either? No, this is actually how I came into my wedding. Just rappelled down to the altar? Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I broke my fucking leg, so I, I couldn't dance at the it. end, but worth totally it. fucking worth it. Also, awesome. though, if I knew there were snakes down there, nah, I'm sending one of those other people first. I would rather fly in and land on a, a hundred fucking dicks than one snake. So this and scene right here where he looking. falls and it's got his little, like, wings up at him, that's actually a live snake, and they coerced it to do that, and there was the plexiglass. Back banner, the back looks like it's like the Ace of Spades. It looks like a that emblem it has on the back of it. Fuck they, that, dude. Yeah, they put a they put a piece of plexiglass between Harrison Ford and and the snake, and that was how they filmed it. And Harrison Ford was like, "No, fuck that. I don't want to do that." And they made him more or less. I'd rather hear about my wife's day at work than fucking land on all those snakes. Yeah, and that's smart. Let's just spray it with gasoline. That's not going to piss them off. See, she, now she knows what she's doing. Right now. Yeah. She's like, look, let's just have a drink. She has her talents. She knows what she's doing. And it's drinking, which is a good talent. I, I wish I were better at it. But I am pretty good at it, I guess. If a woman could out drink you, you'd be in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. <laughs> Because all the stupid shit you say, if she's drunk and she's going drink for drink, she probably won't remember it. But if she's sober and you're hammered, God, you're going to say a lot of stupid shit. So the Ark of the Covenant was hidden in King Tut's tomb? Uh, y yes. Covered in snakes. Which makes no sense. Does it? I don't, I don't understand. I didn't think this was – I thought The Covenant was later, but I don't know. No, This, this isn't is a very long movie. It's not even two hours. No, it's not. It's like, it's like just under two hours. But back in the, the 80s, that was like a three-hour movie. Yeah. And then now they make movies like Troy, which is legit three hours long. But Troy is fucking great. It is fucking great. We're doing it again. We're watching the movie because it's a good the movie. Scene. This is, I think, right here on the wall behind him is when you can see R two D two. I never even heard of that. Fun oh fact. yeah, it was right there. It's R two D two and C three P. It's on the post. Wow. So that happened a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So. Someone in Star Wars is there. And they Psyche says, Psyche says every movie connects. Well, everyone knows that. How can it's, I say it? Fuck it, I'm just going to say it. If I was a woman, I'd fuck with men all the time like this. It'd be so fucking fun. Because all we think of with is our dicks. We're fucking stupid-ass creatures. You, it'd be easy. If you're a smart woman, you could rule the world. What? what? Never mind. Never I guess that's I guess more than a butter knife. I mean, she's not trying to kill you. I don't know what you guys do for foreplay, but I'm not. I'm not going to get a boner. Yeah, this guy, like, haunted my dreams for three or four years when I was 10 to 12 years old. Probably because the only person he would scare is a 10 to 12-year-old because he looks like the biggest fucking pedophile ever. <laughs> it's true. I, I wasn't safe at that time. Get in the van, young Brian. I will give you some candy. 
this little thing right here. <laughs> like, what the? <laughs> but then, like, now. But it like, looks like a dinner bell. I know. <laughs> Dinner is ready. We're having bratwurst and sauerkraut and some schnitzel hymen with pretzels. <laughs> it's like they're doing surgery. I would just shove that shit in there and pick it up like a man. See, these movies are never realistic. Like, if he's going to question the woman, like, where's Indy? Like, I'll never tell. I'll cut your hair. He's down trying to find the covenant. It's it's to the left. You guys were digging in the wrong place. <laughs> I just got my hair done. It's not going to get cut. Please don't. I finally found... You know how hard it is to find a beautician in fucking Cairo that knows how to layer and perm and press this shit? And somewhere that's going to do my nails at the same time? Please. God, it would just take one of these snakes to snap at my fucking legs. I'd be like, you're you're on your own, Jose. Fuck this shit. Yeah, fucking I'm... jumping up the rope. Nope. Fuck those slither. I wouldn't bastards. even be down there, though. There's, there's no way you could get me to go even go down there. Like, what amount of money, or, or what at all, would convince you that you can go down there? Okay, a couple questions. Are they poisonous? Yes. Then fuck not. None. Because even if you got the money, so basically I'd be poisonous and I'd just give all the money like to my wife. And Ted, her new boyfriend, after I died after five months. Yeah, Fuck that Ted, shit. Ted's a nice guy. I mean, yeah, he's a nice guy, and he's going to take good care of her and stuff. I mean, he's got a good 401k. But I don't want them living off me just because I got fucking off a poisonous snake. I think technically it's venomous as well, not poisonous. Venomous, yeah. The venom. Because Banner, venom... you ain't sucking that shit out of me. There's no way. Uh, no. <laughs> not at all. He's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> what a douchebag. He's like, like, honestly, I would never, even if it was my worst Jeff. enemy, like if it was Jeff Hornacek down there, I wouldn't kick the, kick the uh, rope down and be like, no, don't come back. It's a pit full like, of jokes snakes. On you. Joke's on you, Indy. I'm taking this and cashing it in. I'm making a uh, convenience store called 7-Eleven. Before you know it, they'll be everywhere. I'll be rich. Watch watch me. Just watch me do it. Mock my words. This is how 7-Eleven started right here. A, I told you it's a documentary. What if he said, thank you, come again, then just closes <laughs> the lid on MD? <laughs> thank you, come again. This is iconic too, with the uh, snake going through the yep. slipper. Uh, that ki that hit would probably break a back or something. Yeah, the thing on the back of its neck is pretty fucking cool. It looks like a yeah, an ace of spades or something. I mean, if you're down there and you're down there for a while, I mean, you're gonna probably have sex, right? Of course, on where the Ark of the Covenant was, please. Absolutely. That's that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It would probably take some convincing with all the sand and everything, but, I mean, I think he could get there. He's charming enough. What a creepy pedophile, dude. Oh, fuck that, dude. No. Fuck that. No. And then the fire's gone. Fuck nope. it. Nope. We haven't did anything that slithers except for my trouser snake, if you know what I mean, because you're the best. Trying to burn the bull whip.
Again, he just rips the dress like like it's no big deal. And I'm not even close to a man enough to be able to do that. Dude, snakes coming through walls no. is like my biggest fear too. Because no. they can't they can climb fucking walls. I am dude. terrified right now. I forgot how many fucking snakes were in this movie. Jesus Christ. Fuck that. <laughs> nope. Nope. I'm out. He's so good with the fucking whip. They just keep getting bigger and bigger, too, right? If she, didn't, if she didn't drop her toot, I would leave her down there by herself. Indy's trying to help. That one's just a little baby snake, it looks like. Yeah, it's still too big for me. What's weird is that so if you're a you're an eighty one baby, so you'd be probably eight or nine years older than us, but I don't know anybody that named their kid Indiana or Indy, which is kinda weird from these because one of my friends is named Hans. Hans or Hans? Hans. Like Han Solo. Like Hans like D two or D three, I can't remember which uh, let's not open the, that Pandora's box, but his name was Han, like Han Solo. <laughs> okay, no S, though. No. Okay. How would you think that was Indiana Jones? And yet, somehow, like, this entire room full of dead skeletons is way less terrifying than all of the snakes. Okay, the snakes, yeah, but would skeletons really scare you? I mean, they're dead. It would more just gross me it out. It would gross me out a little. Like, if a snake's coming out of their mouth, sure. But I'm yeah, like, okay, I don't know, they're all fucking me. dead. It's gross. I mean, it probably smells, maybe. I don't know. They've all been decayed by yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know how long it would take for them to smell or not smell. This is another great iconic scene coming up. Nazi planes. This movie just has it all, dude. It does. And it's, like I said, it's relatively quick. Like, we're, I think it's an hour and 51 minutes long, and we're an hour and 15 in. Doesn't feel like it. It also um, has the Jurassic World complex, where the guy is in, like, a rugged fucking outfit in, like, the desert mm -hmm. running from shit, and the chick is in a $200 fucking skimpy ass dress. Yep, yep. Running in heels. But you know what? If you want to make a woman movie, then go do it. This is our movie, so just leave us alone. Quit bitching about it. And girls like $200 dresses, so I don't understand the problem. Again, the score in this movie, I can't say it enough, is phenomenal. Can I say this without... Like, I hate Nazis, but it'd be pretty badass to fly like a Nazi fucking plane yeah they what they believed in is really fucked up but yeah like some of the stuff that they had was cool yeah like i would want to fly one for sure yeah. i mean i'd try to crash it at the end well naturally that's just that's just doing your civic duty so this dude right here in 81 this big ass guy that this would be like the rock playing this role now like this guy was in shape and everyone's like jesus christ look at that monster but he's got, like, love handles, and he's not even really that big and strong. He looks like he looks like the dudes from the 1920s boxing posters. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, uh, like is this you cutting weight? I mean, he... He also doesn't look German to me at all. I would feel like kind of comfortable fighting this dude. Yeah, I wouldn't feel too bad he either. Looks the way really he's got his slow. hands on. He looks slower and fuck, and if someone fights like that, I'd be like, okay, he's... Good move going with the kick, because he definitely has some length on you. I'm pretty sure this was another scene where Harrison Ford was, like, deathly ill. Which now that guy's got it, because he bit him. It's like rabies. I mean, his, yeah, he... 
his punches are throwing really slow. It's yeah, it's kind of a cheesy fight scene. Let's be honest with ourselves. But it's well choreographed. Back in eighty one, this is before steroids or anything. So this this dude is probably the most muscular guy they could get. Oh, I wouldn't even not even close to the most muscular guy they could get. Because when did like, well even even like wrestlers back then. They weren't that big. In 81, this is right about the time Hulk Hogan started, maybe like 83, 84. Yeah. When did, uh, when did, or not Sylvester Stallone, although he, he was pretty big too. Cause like Creed or, um, not Creed. Uh, first, first Rocky, Rocky was in like was 76. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And then you had, um. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, dude, he was jacked, and that was in, yeah. like, the 70s. Can you imagine Harrison Ford and Arnold Schwarzenegger doing a fight like this? So, actually, so this movie takes place in the 40s, so this is probably historically accurate, especially the way he was trying to box and punch. Yes. One, yeah. So I take back everything I just said. I don't. If the PC movement didn't happen, like, nowadays, you think, like, the damsel in distress would just be wearing, like, the skankiest bikini with, like, a ball gag or something? Or It would basically how, like, look like Megan Fox wins? in <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> like, she's just all lubed up and stuff, <laughs> in high heels running through the fucking desert. <laughs> Maybe the PC thing was good. Maybe we did need to be taken back a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. We, we needed to be put in check. <laughs> The director's like, okay, Megan, in this scene, you're going to wear that uh, two-piece I got you with the bow gag and the, the uh, high heels, and you're going to be running from the train. You got it? Okay, action! He's like, we need more lip gloss, though. Yeah, more lip gloss, and yeah, <laughs> and then just oil her up. That would suck. Yes. Like, there, you always have the argument, would you rather drown or catch on fire, either one is probably better than that. I think drowning would take longer to die than catching on fire, maybe? Yeah, I always said I would rather catch on fire than drown. Just me personally. Uh, I mean, if I had a, a, a choice, though, just shoot me between the eyes. Right. Actually, I guess if I had the... If it was drowning, catching on fire, or being chopped up with an airplane propeller, give me the airplane propeller. The only thing I'd ask for, though, is a last meal. What would your last meal be? Dude, I've thought long and hard about this. I think it might be sushi. Wow. But like a bunch of different types. I love to just binge on sushi. The problem with sushi is I could legit go and eat like $80 worth of sushi. Absolutely. And then not be full two hours later. Or just ask to bring in like a propane grill and I want like cheeseburgers, brats, grilled Some chicken. Steak. Yeah, and I want like someone to make mac and cheese and like fucking onion rings on the side. Mm-hmm. That'd probably be my last meal. Maybe some like potato salad or macaroni salad. We should do that, man. We shouldn't have to kill or rape someone to get a last meal. We should be able to do that at like a bro four squad retreat where we just make a last meal for ourselves even though we're not going to die. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Well, fuck, it's only for people that murdered and raped someone. That's not fucking fair. I mean, I've lived and a really good life. Some of I them don't even take them. advantage of it. They have, like, a like a cheese sandwich, like a cold cheese sandwich. We need to do that. We need to bring that up to Jeff and Cycli because they'll all be for it, I guarantee you. Yeah. We need to include Thurman in that, though, because that motherfucker can grill. Yes, he can. He is a master of the grill. He is a master uh, of the grill. One thing, I just took a drink of my beer and looked up at um, Harrison Ford, and he kind of looks like Jamie Lannister in some of the uh, I scenes. Can, I, yeah, I could kind of see that. He's it's, got the haircut in the 5 o'clock shadow. Yeah, but he's not as much of a bitch as Jamie Lannister. You bite your tongue, sir. The Kingslayer? I don't know. <laughs> and this don't give dude, me the this shit dude on the right looks like he's like the hottest chick 60. of the land. Okay, all of these dudes look German. 
the riding the horse in the desert's pretty badass too, man. For an action movie, you don't really get that in action movies anymore, unless it's like a western, I guess. Yeah. You got yeah. horse going up against a horse power in the car. I forgot how much action. Like once, uh, once they get past that second act, this third act, how much action there is in it. It's just a giant ass chase scene, basically. I feel bad for any of the chicks back in college that might have a homework question, but like Dr. Jones is never available on the weekends because he's trying to kill Nazis. I mean, like, I just want to know if the essay is due on Monday or Wednesday. I should have took notes. <laughs> Let's be honest. She's probably going to get an A anyway, because even if she fails the essay, she's going to be like, look, is there something we can do here? Office hours are Tuesday at three. And this is us, too. And I'm like, Banner, you got to take the expressway. And you're like, no, I know no. a shortcut. No, we can we can get there without paying the toll. Is it just me or is movies just not this fun anymore? They're not. Like, I'm so, having a blast. You're taking down all the scaffolding of them building a house. People are just like windshield wipering off the windshield. Having a good just, laugh about it. I just feel like this scene is fun and kind of funny, but most of the scenes and action scenes now are just kind of stupid or something. Well, and or not. how this is filmed, you can actually see what's going on. Now it's all that cutscene stuff. Like, yeah. Batman Begins really gets to me because I think it's well choreographed, but it, every half a second they cut. Cut, yeah. This that's, is like all, and it's all practical. and tribute. Tri uh, he cuts a lot for sure. This one's just kind of a – there's three different shoots they're doing. One is just a straightaway driving shoot. The one is just what Indy is seeing. And the other one they cut away to kind of basically what the Nazi car is going to shoot yeah. at them. Give you a little bit of scenery. But I'm having a blast seeing this. This is a – I mean and obviously it's, it's one of the greatest movies of all time. But this is a, just a really fun action movie. And this is only going to get better once he starts – when he gets the bullwhip and gets dragged from the car. That's in this one, right? That's this movie. I'm, I think it's this scene. I'm pretty sure it's this scene. It's either this scene or it's in the third one, and they have a very similar scene. It's just, out of all time, you know me, I'm a fan of the chase scene. Uh, oh, no. no. What would you think about if you were falling that far? I would try to brace myself thinking like if I only break my legs, Look, maybe if you, I can if you tuck, it. when you're falling that long, you have to do a tuck and roll. Yeah. It'll be fine. Of, of all time chase scenes, this is a top five. I still think Bad Boys 2 is probably my favorite. Jesus. You knew it was coming up. When you, when anytime we talk about chase scenes, we have to talk about that one. But this is probably a top five, maybe even a top three. Mercedes. I didn't even realize that. That just takes a shot to the arm like it's nothing. I love two in movies. Like, literally, if I took a gunshot to the arm, done. I would fucking push on the brakes and be like, guys, I'm fucking <laughs> done. I'm probably going to bleed out and die if I don't get help. Yep. But then, it's honestly like if you would just come up and flick my arm at the bar. Like, that's how it, a gunshot in the arm is in, the, in these movies. I don't even take, like, real shots. Like, I got the flu last month, and I went to the doctor, and they are like, all right, we can give you a shot, and you'll be better in 24 hours. You can take this pill, and you'll be better in a week. And I was like, give me the pill. I'm not even going to take a needle shot. Oh, really? You don't like needles? No, I don't do needles at all. Snakes and needles are the two things I don't do. I don't mind needles that much. This guy looks like he's like 55 or 60. There's no way that DeFuro looks, would allow him in the military. He looks like Paul Hogan from Crocodile Dundee. He actually dude. does look like Crocodile Dundee. Fucking might be Paul Hogan. It huh? might be, actually. The, the, just thinking the time frame was about right. It's like, I'm blonde hair and blue eyes, so these fellas like me. Don't look that up. There's no way Paul Hogan's in this movie. There's no way that's <laughs> Yeah, this is the scene, Banner. He's yeah. going under the car. Yeah, this is this is great. There we go. 
Paul Hogan. This could happen for sure, right? Yeah. You know how they film this? So when it's actually – first off, they're instead of going like 60 miles an hour, they're going like 20. And uh, Harrison Ford basically just laid on a carpet that they dragged behind the car. God, the Dude, it looks deadly exactly kick. like him. The deadly kick. No. This was 81, right? Yep. Yeah, he was not. He was not. It's not him. Yeah, these cars back in the day, what do you think they topped out at? Like 80? No, no. not even. Especially on that terrain. Dude, they're probably topping out at 50. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. It's like me after slow pitch softball <laughs> holding my shoulder, except he took like a nine millimeter to it. <laughs> right. It's like, ah, damn. I don't know if I can play next week. Uh, we got the we uh, no, we got the Raptors next week. We got to play. We're not going to make the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Well, bring a 30 pack. I'll be fine. 30 pack and some Tylenol. Yeah. It's just like a, like a bro four squad breakfast. You have a cup of black coffee Advil, cold, and sinus, three crackers, and a glass of water, and you're ready to go again. I don't know what these melons are, but how do they grow melons in the middle of the desert? It must have got it at the town next door. I don't fucking know. <laughs> See, back then, they fucked up, dude. Like, we we kind of liked the Middle East back in the 80s. We we're like, okay, they're all right. You know, they yeah. wear, wear towels and stuff. That's kind of cool, I guess. But then we started a couple wars with them. and Yeah, and then the rest is history, as they yeah, say. Now they hate us. This guy, too, the sea captain, dude, he's a badass. I feel like anybody that can smoke, like, a like a cigar like that or a cigarette with no filter and just, like, Oh, I light it and it goes out. I'll just light it again and keep going. You're a badass. Absolutely. I, I didn't realize how like, wearing the dress. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize how much like kind of secret comedy there was in this. Like like that. Like he's squeezing him and everything hurts and he just keeps yeah, it's doing just like it. Like Star Wars. Yeah. You know, Star Wars are secret comedy in. Well, Nowadays, she's out with them. yeah, but 20 years from now, she can come back and get him for that. That's true. It's cut low in the back. I like it. That's a nice dress. I told you it was a nice dress, man. It looks like this is like the first time he ever got laid. He's just walking down the street singing now. This is when Shia LaBeouf is conceived. Now she's got a now different she's got one. A, another Jesus. nice dress on. Man. This is like a this is like a going out nice dress. Oh, yeah, man. That's a silk. She's put out all the signs to Indy for yeah. sure. So I haven't seen the the new one in 2008. Like, how does she look in the new one? Uh, I mean, pretty much the same. She's just a little older. So I she mean, it's not like Carrie Fisher bad or anything. No, like no, 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 not Carrie Fisher bad at all. Little few wrinkles, some gray hair. Not too bad though. God, he's such a badass. He's like. She's like, are you okay? He's like, I can barely move. He's like, okay, we'll, we'll just go to bed. No, I still want to, yeah. like, have He's sex. Like, no, I as long can't. as look, you just be on top, it'll be fine. Oh, 
Logan's Again, like, don't he... be such a baby. I took two fucking nine millimeters to my body. What, like, seriously? I love I he doesn't take the hat off either. <laughs> no, fuck that. You think Cairo has any antibiotics or a CVS that you can drive through <laughs> with a prescription? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Collins and like, Tylenol just, here. Just, just drink the camel urine. That heals everything, yeah. apparently. Yeah. He's like, I can't believe this is going to work. Kiss my elbow. Kiss my eyeball. Now kiss me. I mean, he's might as well. She's the hottest chick in Cairo. That's not hard to do, though. Did you see Sala's wife? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So the the covenant just like kills these rats? Is that is that what's going on here? Oh, this looks like Hornisex Garage with that Nazi brand on it when you walk in. <laughs> Look at that. Like that dress just hanging over the side. You know she's got nothing on under that. Here's my only thing. She hasn't showered, so she's probably pretty gross, right? She's been in the desert for three or four days. Yeah, some guys like that, though. I don't know. She's just, she's just throwing some secret. <laughs> you don't think Indy packed any Axe body spray? Maybe he could just spray on her? I'm pretty sure that uh, there's a flavor of Axe Body Spray called Indiana Jones. I don't think that's true or I would have bought it. Maybe, we may... Is she always getting captured? Like, always. what the fuck? After a while, you might just look at her and be like, hey, I love you and everything. You're just kind of like accident You're not friend. worth it. <laughs> fuck. Sometimes I just want to relax and, you know, watch the game. Watch the UFC football game and you're, you know, you're always getting captured. She is always getting captured. I never realized how, like, she's always in, looks like she's going to prom in this. And I think she's honestly hottest in the bar when we first meet her. I don't know. She looks pretty hot in this dress. Well, it's true, I guess. I stand corrected. We don't even do this as much today. I mean, remember Slave Leia? Uh, I mean, we... God, Slave God. Leia. I think we're almost a little bit immune to it, though, because you think about it, in all these movies, there was only, like, one scene or one outfit. Now that's just their outfit. Yeah. Like you got like Margot Robbie in Suicide Squad. Everybody's like, oh my God, but that's just her outfit in the whole thing. See, the only thing I could think of right now is Fred Claus when Elizabeth Banks is dressed as that sexy Santa person. <laughs> like so fucking hot. That's the only good thing about Fred Claus. Fred the Claus. only reason I watch Fred Claus is just for the Elizabeth Banks fucking scenes. What a but fucking pretty much, We've pretty much gone full circle from the opening scene that set a tone... And um, we went from there to the jungle, to the desert, now to the water. We've been on horseback. We've had a whip. We've had a car chase scene where he was a carried by the car. This is a full, yeah, this is a full-fledged fucking action film right here. 
if we Nazis. Got, yeah, you've yeah. get you've got the girl, the sexy outfits. If we were playing action movie bingo, I would probably call bingo right now. You have to call bingo. I'm not sure what else we're missing actually from an action movie. I mean, we've had animals. I mean, snake is more of a reptile, but we, I mean, we've had we've had it all, dude. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is like, uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything. This is great too when he tries to put on the dude's uh, clothes. God, he is a sexy man. He is. And if you were to watch this in 81, and you're probably thinking, man, I wonder what the sexiest man alive looks like in 2018, there's no way you would have thought Blake Shelton. Basically a chunkier, bloated, fatter, uglier version than of Harrison Ford. Yeah, just a, yeah. like a like, drunk Harrison Ford. Yeah, I don't understand that. Who's voting in these? Blake Shelton is not attractive at all. I don't know, dude. I know I'm not voting. But literally, after a while, like, you know, everyone says, like, if you see a hot chick, like, one of my friends is, like, somewhere out there, someone's tired of fucking her. Like, this this would get old when she gets captured all the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was our anniversary. I'm just trying to take her to a nice dinner, and she gets fucking captured. Like, fuck. We missed her reservation. You know what we're missing? A, a good headbutt knockout. Does that happen in a little bit? I don't know if that happens. That might be our only one from having a, a blackout board on our action movie bingo. The only headbutt knockout I can think of right now is Batman Forever when Tommy Lee Jones does it. Check out that movie commentary that yeah, we did. Oh. I don't remember that one either. What if any of these actors are actually German? Kind of like Air Force One when, like, none of them are... <laughs> yeah, none of them are Russian? Yeah, like... You got... What's his ass who's English? Yeah, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman is English doing a Russian accent. No, it was him trying to do a Russian accent, not doing a Russian accent. Two completely different things. Check out that commentary, too. Seriously, we're not shamelessly plugging these. We're just coming up with shit. We've just yeah, done a just, commentary on everything. It just happens. When you've got... Almost 300 of them in the bank. It's hard not to. Do you think she's ever like, can I change into something more sophisticated for a prisoner? Like, it looks like you just, like, it looks like she's doing the walk of shame right. except with a bunch of Nazi soldiers behind her. Yeah, the only it, difference is she doesn't have her hand, her, uh, shoes in her hand. Yeah, her shoes in her hands and her fucking dead phone trying to, like, get a signal. Yeah. The walk of shame, dude. We've all done it. We've all been there. So I don't know why are they why don't they drive a car here? Why are they not walking? Or why are they walking? Uh they all just got new Fitbits, so they're trying to get their steps uh, up. They're really into it. It's like Indy, yay. You're here to save me again? Gosh. With a fucking rocket launcher. <laughs> Nothing says my dick is bigger than yours than if you have a rocket launcher know, right? on your shoulder. At least he called him doctor. He yeah. gave him that respect. He earned it. He's he earned it. Seven years of school.
He just it's, that's such a ballsy move too, just to walk into a group of dudes with a bunch of guns and with a rocket launch and go, I'll just blow all of you up. And he's like, All I want is the girl. There's no way There's she'll make no it. There's no way protection. you actually want the girl. No. Why? Because she's just gonna get captured again in ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, call his bluff. For the last hour and a half, all I can think about is how I want some pizza. I'm just thinking about what I want for my last meal whenever we do it here in probably a month or two at a Brofor Squad retreat. Do you think Thurman could grill a pizza? I put a pizza on a propane grill before. It tastes fucking delicious. Mm. We're going to add that to the list. It's just like putting it in an oven, but a better tasting oven. about to text Thurman right now. Indy's surrounded. The island's, pr- the island's kind of pretty too. It sucks that you're a prisoner on it, but yeah. It means this kind of th- looks like this kind of looks like the uh, the sacred place that the uh, Power Rangers go to to get their new animal. Yeah, the frog powers. Yeah, that they the get. frog powers and stuff. Check out that movie commentary yeah. too. Again, guys, we're not purposely doing this. We've just done we've just done movies on everything. We're sorry that we do our job. Yeah, we're sorry that you keep watching them, so we keep making them. This part actually kind of creeped me out too, with the typecast uh, Nazi guy. You think they told this guy like, "Hey, we finally got the covenant." It's like, "Oh, cool! I got this perfect outfit I want to wear." <laughs> Yeah. He's like, awesome. I just went shopping for this occasion itself. Got this from H&M. This, fr- this was from Express. It wasn't on the discount rack, but I decided to uh, you know, reward myself. I lost three pounds this week doing uh, Whole30. <laughs> like I did, I did two days of P90X, so I should yeah. be good. Sorry, it's 1981. He did a... Uh, what was that gazelle thing that Tony Little had? Yeah. Was that in the 80s? Either that or was Richard Simmons? The Airwalker. <laughs> Richard Simmons aerobics, was that the 80s? Yeah. Do you remember Tony Little who was just jacked out of his mind? He's like, this is all I do, just the air glide. I'm like, that makes no sense. Yeah, you there's no way. to take steroids. He, like, invented steroids. Googling if Tony Little is still alive. <laughs> There's no way he's alive. He had a heart attack in like 85. He had to have. Like the dude that played Bane in uh, Batman and Robin. <laughs> Check out that movie commentary too. Says, so this is like the Wrath of God alive. now. This is the Wrath of God coming out. And it's burning everybody because they don't believe in God because they, they look at it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this yep. part this part scared the shit out of me too. Whenever uh, the dude in the black hat here in a second, they, it like melts him. So is it not, is the art technically not lost now? Because he knows where it's at, right? Yeah, it's called the found arc now. The found arc. That's the sequel. The found Ark of the Covenant. Was that Cher? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just, I don't know. This whole thing is just fucking creepy. So at the very end here, I always thought that this movie was pretty good. Then it gets really really out there yeah it gets a little weird here (laughs) so are they burning to death yeah yeah right there when they melt i mean that's definitely dated and looks terrible but hey what are you gonna do his head explodes yeah 
back in the day though, like our parents were like, holy fucking shit. That you see was that? real. <laughs> that looks like seriously, if I burned off Ted's face after this movie when we go to Sonic, it would look like that. It would look just like that. Oh, well, now the Covenant's going up into space. I don't, I guess I don't remember this part. So this is a Scientology movie? Oh, no, now it's back on Earth. It's still found. Okay, all right. I didn't want to, you know, say Tom Cruise was right, but I was about to if it went up into space. <laughs> right? <laughs> Who, there was another famous actor or actress that recently came out as Scientology. Who was that? I just, I Dude, just, I'm not gonna hate on it because once we get like over ten thousand or ten, yeah, ten thousand subscribers, I'm probably gonna be a Scientologist. It's just the cool thing to do when you make it big. Yeah. yeah. It might have been. Was it Jaden Smith? Maybe. Well, Will Smith's a Scientologist, I think. Yeah, maybe it was Will Smith. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now they're back in Washington D.C. All over the place. So does oh that's right. So the government has it now, because it shows yeah. up later. Because everyone knows our government doesn't do anything. They just they just hire civil servants, <laughs> like uh, archaeologists from UCLA or USC to go do the dirty work. Yeah, and then they're just gonna keep it in a vault for years and years. Absolutely makes sense. Where did it ever happen to just smoking pipes wherever you were at? We need to bring that back, and we need to bring back making someone a drink once making they enter your home drink. or office. I love that now she's back, and she can pick whatever dress she wants. Like, this and is she, the least Yankee she's looked the entire movie. Yeah, and she picks a freaking trench coat dress. It's awesome. Is there anything sexier than whatever she says? I'll buy you a drink. No. Is it weird that some girls just look better when they're sweating and she's one of them? She's Bryce of Dallas them. Howard's another one. Yep. yep. When she's sweating, she looks hotter than when she just is dry and did her makeup for two hours. She's just dry. <laughs> I want to know what all these other top secret things are. What if they're just like empty boxes? They're, they're all aliens, sit. man. All of them. So this is where they're storing the covenant? Yep. Just throw it in the basement. It'll be fine. There's actually in the, uh, in the fourth one, there's a scene in this warehouse here. And they knock the covenant over. It's kind of cool. Guys, that was Indiana oh. Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark. One of the greatest all-time action-adventure movies ever. Ever. With one of the most iconic characters ever. Ever. Geiger, any last thoughts? Uh, women need to be damsels in distress more in $200 dresses running through jungles in the desert and stuff. It's just the American way. Other than that, great movie, probably the greatest... I believe this is the greatest of the trilogy. I know that a lot of people have a bunch of different ideas. So do you, which makes this trilogy fucking awesome that there's not just one clear cut winner, but this is one of the greatest adventure movies ever period. I agree. I couldn't, couldn't agree more that this is one of the greatest adventure stories ever. Uh, and Indiana Jones, just cool name, cool dude, cool. Everything about him. Couldn't get a better person to play him. I love this movie. Even the snake scene, which really creeps me out. I absolutely love it. We have been the Bro4 Squad Podcast. For Matthew F. Geiger, I'm Brian Banner. You guys can check us out on our website, www.bro4squad.com. Go ahead and hit that like button or subscribe, whatever social media you are on. Right now, we're on them all. Follow us on Twitter, at bro 4 Squad. And I think that's it. We're on Spotify if you have that. Just Google Bro4Squad Podcast. You'll find us. For 
the enforcer i'm the mad scientist we will catch you guys in some other archaeological site so does the asian kid come in the next one or the third one i'm confused it's the next one but it's actually a prequel so it's oh i get it dr jones Thank you.